Welcome to Intersection. I'm Justin Bell, and I'm here in Silicon Beach, California, where the world of high tech meets good old California car culture. But you see, I'm at somewhat of an intersection myself because I spent the last 25 years racing and driving high performance internal combustion cars. But when it comes to the world of EVs, I've definitely got a lot of unanswered questions. So I thought, get my hands on one of the latest cars to the EV market. In this case, the 2023 Nissan Aro. Well, it feels like a car, drives like a car, but when it comes to exploring the car, I don't even trust my own bias on the subject. So I've invited a great friend of mine, I, Justine, as you might know her, Justine Ezerick, who's one of the world's top social media influencers when it comes to technology. I hit 7 million subscribers on YouTube. Now, you'd think that I'd do all the driving, but maybe that's a bit too much of a natural given. Justine's actually gonna do some of the driving and also delve into the technology available. Hey, it's so nice to see you again. You too. It's been a long time. I've heard that you've actually never covered an electric car before. Isn't that crazy? It's wild. Well, you know what I think? That's the beauty of this story was I've stayed very much on my ice side of the fence only because it's what I know. And I, this EV phenomenon is, it's so undeniable and so powerful, but I truly don't understand some of the technology that exists in it. Yeah, and it's kind of crazy because you know, you come from this whole car world. I was never really interested in cars until EVs. So I feel like now it is something that I'm super passionate about and it's been really fun to kind of explore that whole world and how quickly it's changing. In, in a way, I'm intimidated by EVs, so I want to know more. That's why I brought you along. Well, I think this is great because I feel like we are both on complete opposite sides of the fence. So I feel like we're going to have a lot to bring to this conversation. I'm going to let you drive okay, because really? I want to learn as All right, we go. Let's go. Um, what was it when you first test drove one that made you go out the same day and buy one? Well. Okay. Maybe a little something like that. <laughs> it's so fast. I just feel like before, like that wasn't something that was attainable in just an everyday car. And now with electric vehicles, it's kind of giving you that power. And it's, it's pretty exhilarating. The first time that I ever floored it in like an electric vehicle, I almost passed out because <laughs> the feeling was something that I'd never experienced. And like, that's something that just doesn't feel like it's normal. No, but that's it, right? It becomes fun. Mm -hmm. And it's a connection to a different type of driving and it is a literally a, a, an amazing linear acceleration straight from the get-go uh, with no effective gears to go up. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'd hyped it up too much in my mind, this range anxiety. It's what everyone talks about. Yeah. Is it a real thing or do you just have to plan your life accordingly? I was very nervous because I would never even charge my phone at night or like my watch and so I was like I'm never gonna be able to get an electric vehicle so I think there is a little bit more planning that you do have to do and depending upon the type of vehicle you have you can charge it in different types of spots but I feel like as long as you're able to plan either charge the night before or charge while you're on your lunch break and the displays and the maps make it super easy so if you're going on a road trip it'll already pre-plan out where you need to go and charge to make sure you make it to your destination let's be honest i think the average commute it is very low i mean i hardly ever charge my car because i'm not i don't drive very far i mean i go to meetings but this car gets about 257 miles per charge okay. and that's pretty impressive i mean for most of your daily driving like you're not going to really need to charge it very often at all. As there's more of an adoption of the EV lifestyle, they're going to, the designers are going to be able to, and the architects are going to be able to take this further into the realms of futuristic imagination. Really, it's a blank canvas, isn't it? They can, they can integrate the apps, they can entertain you while they drive. Where do you see the future going? I guess the future of I mean, EVs is, like you said, I mean, it really is a blank canvas. Like, anything is possible. And I think that's what is so exciting to me is people are constantly integrating third-party apps, third-party things into vehicles. So it's like you can start with just a blank canvas, like you said, and you can be receiving, like, these over-the-air updates. It's wild, isn't it? 
something I find very exciting okay. is that car companies traditionally have always connected high performance with their road products. We call it tractor street. Every single manufacturer, OEM, does it. It's how they justify racing. Right. And to be honest, when they started this EV phenomenon, I was thinking, how are they? How on earth are they going to to still evolve that? And Formula E was what they came up with. It has all the ingredients, great drivers, high technology, amazing looking cars, incredible locations. All over the world they have right. these races. And and yet, the only thing missing is the visceral touch point of, of sound and mm -hmm. the sound of a racing car. But Nissan got heavily involved in Formula E. And that reassures me, because any time a manufacturer is using thoroughbred race cars to evolve their products and develop them, you know it raises the bar. Things do evolve so quickly, so it's like things that people are working on now, I mean, we're going to be seeing that at some point and it's just going to be so shocking to see how quickly it does evolve. It is all about enhancing our experience and not taking away mm -hmm. from it. Just the tech aspect, like you can do so many things, I mean we're basically driving a computer. That's what you call talk. Yeah, how do you, how do you like that? Actually, it's up to 442 foot pounds of talk, which is, is in the old days, let's put it in perspective. 20 years ago, nearly no car had over 300 horsepower. Wow. Or 300 foot pounds of talk. It's, it's amazing how things have evolved. And of course, in, some, in, in the EV, it's totally instant. No gear shifting, all the way up. This is the all wheel drive. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah. Which I think, you know, is with all that talk is a very smart way of going for the drivetrain. Right. So one of the things that I love about electric vehicles is regenerative braking. So right now we're in the E-step mode. So when I take my foot off of the acceleration, it brakes a little bit. And that allows for you to actually have some battery back into your system, which is kind of cool. I've done some trips up in the mountains to Big Bear, and I'll actually get home with more battery than I had when I left because of all of the downhill. It's so cool. That is sensational, isn't it? You see, now even my legs are redundant. <laughs> I'm just getting, I'm working out that I'm getting less and less useful in life. It's true. My God, you're aging me out, Justine, <laughs> as I'm sitting here. The driving experience is in a way even enhanced. I mean, my first time behind the wheel of an EV, I bought one the same day. I drove three hours to go pick it up from the time of buying it on my phone. Like, it, it's just, it's something that I can't even explain until you've actually felt it. Like if you've never driven one, like go test drive and just, just like experience it because it really is the future. I mean, it literally feels like a video game. Like it's just, everything feels very intuitive, very smooth. The handling is also incredible. We are making people's heads turn in cars. Like I'm looking at them and they're just like, Ooh, what is that? that? Yeah. Like this color too, it's like a copper. Yeah. I like to call it rose gold because that's like my favorite metal. So Do you order your fans in rose gold? I do and all my jewelry. So I'm like, okay. this matches my aesthetic. So I love it. I also love that they have the interior with all of the copper accents as yeah. well. Oh, Justine, this has been so fun. I feel it's been so much more than just being chauffeured around. It's been a tutorial for me, a mind, a mind adjust, adjust on where this technology fits in my life and what to look out for. Yeah, and I mean, I feel like there's so much more to even tell you about this car and EVs in general that we're gonna need a longer drive. That's exciting. I do know that I have to drop it off because Miguel, one of the editors, is gonna drive it all the way to Laguna Seca. <gasps> That's so fun. Well, I certainly had my fun in the Aria, but Miguel's last words to me were, Please, just make sure, Justin, that you give me a full charge for my trip up to Monterey. Done. Thank you, Justin, for the charge. And before I head to Monterrey, I'm gonna talk about charging. To talk about that, here's Jonathan Levy. He's Chief Commercial Officer for EVgo. Why don't you tell me about the partnership between EVgo and Nissan? Yeah, so Nissan and EVgo have been longtime partners, both as first movers in electrification, working together since the LEAF and supporting early fast charger build out. And now with the Aria through the Nissan Energy Perks program, Aria drivers will have one year of fast charging on the EVgo network. 
And how do you pay for the charge then? Sure, so there's multiple ways to authenticate a session. You can use the EVgo RFID card, the EVgo app, credit cards, but really the most exciting way is we've rolled out Auto Charge Plus, so you can enroll once and then just plug in the car, and the charger in the car will recognize it and initiate the session automatically. Without you having to swipe your right. credit card. Make it seamless and just easy to go. I understand that there are a lot of EVgo stations between here and Laguna Seca, where I'll be driving this baby, but how about across the country? How's the, the charging network for EVgo? Yeah, we're really excited. We're more than 850 50 fast charging locations across the country. More than 90% of Californians are within a 10 mile drive of an EVgo fast charger. And we're adding high powered 350 kilowatt chargers like these and the ones up in King City that I understand you'll be visiting all across the country. Yeah, 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 that's awesome. Well, Jonathan, thank you so much for being here. I have a five hour drive ahead of me. I'm very excited about that and very excited about Laguna Seca too. Excellent, well, safe travels and happy fast charging. Thank you. So we just left the Motor Trend office and we're on our way to Laguna Seca. One of the things that has caught my attention on my way to Monterrey is that the Aria is a car that gets a lot of eyeballs. People are impressed by its styling and really, it really stands out on the road. It's a very elegant car, very soft lines that could easily be confused by a luxury car. And then you sit inside and you see this cabin, these premium materials, the way that it is designed, how open it is. So that's the way that the area stands out is that may look small on the outside, but it's pretty roomy inside. Then you have the technology, these huge screens that are a step up from any regular car. Now it's time for the icing of the cake. We are in Laguna Seca, Motor Trend's home, away from home. We've spent dozens of years here racing supercars, setting lap records, and now it's my turn to take the area around the track. It's gonna be pretty fun. You know, because of the instant torque, it really pushes pretty hard. It's a fun car to drive around the track. The torque is instant, because the battery is right in the center of the car, the center of gravity is very low, and so that means that the body control is very good. Because it's an EV, you're regenerating power and energy all the time when you brake, so it's easy to do modulate. And around the, the course crew, there's just great body control. You just point and shoot, basically. The steering is well balanced, uh, and because I'm in sport mode, I can feel a little more weighted steering, which is very nice for the track. So it's a great way to end my day going down the course crew in the area. One of the most iconic turns in motorsports. Yes! <laughs> Hasta la vista, baby!